In the late 19th century Kashmir, the farmer citrus was on its absolute peak. This was caused mainly by the huge indebtedness among farmers to the local money lenders known as vain in the form of a verbal contract known in Kashmiri as vad. Huge arrears had accumulated in the revenue department due to non-payment of revenue to the state. As already discussed, in 1885, Maharaja Pratap Singh's accession coincided with Russian threats to the north and suspicions of dealings between Kashmiri and Russian agents. There were other political changes taking place in the state, such as the British passed on the control to a state council from April 1889 until 1905 under the control of a resident. The council made money reforms in the state. Lawrence was highly sympathetic to the ruler Kashmiri cultivators because their situation was such that they often used the phrase Bat Bat Pyad Bat We are crying for food and the tax collector is after us. Lawrence believed like many other Kashmiris that city dwellers were lazy and feckless and relied on the state to support them. An old proverb which he quotes claimed that city people live by nalam kalam ya halam. It might be expected that the traditional state officials and the urban elite might have wielded a disproportionate influence on Lawrence and caused him to weigh the land settlement in their favor. In fact, the reverse was the case. He bypassed local officials and made his assessment by direct observation, coming down firmly on the side of the cultivators and opposing the traditional tyranny of the middlemen. With regard to the religious diversity, his conclusion was that there was a striking degree of mutual religious tolerance in Kashmir in the 1890s. This was largely due to the rather heterodox form of Islam practiced locally. According to Lawrence, Kashmiri Sunnis are only Muslims in name. In their hearts, they are Hindus and the religion of Islam is too abstract to satisfy their superstitious cravings. In major part of Kashmir history, the land was regarded as an absolute property of the state and every year allotments were made to the cultivators. Coming down to 1859, the land was parceled among the Kardars, who were the land agents of the state with immense powers. It was the Kardars' duty to get the largest possible amount of grain for the state. Every year, the Kardar would arrange units for the cultivation of the estate. The unit was known as Nafri, which consisted of a man, his wife, and one adult son. After the Kardar had made his annual distribution of land, the village passed into the hands of one person known as Shagdar, whose duty was to sit in the village and watch the crops. Over the Shagda was an official known as Sazovul. When the harvest time came, a regiment known as Nizami Paltan moved out into the village to enforce the state's claim, and this regiment was always supplemented by spoils from the regular army. The system of farming out group of villages to Chagdas continued till 1873 when an attempt was made to introduce a three years Raitwari settlement. In 1880s, an assessment on villages was made known as the Asami War Kivat, and the basis of this assessment was supposed to have been the average of the collection of the three previous years. This was a major assessment before Lawrence, but it had some significant limitations such as the assessment team never visited the village to take into account the nature of soil, irrigation and other factors. No attempt was made by the assessing officers to distribute the land revenue of a village or the holdings and this most difficult and delicate work was left to the patwari and the lumberdar. Enormous area statement had accumulated against the villagers. This was because 
the revenue was considered as a joint responsibility of the village. Therefore, if an Assami absconds or defaults, the Lambada promptly throws the revenue liabilities of the absconder on the other Assamis. This proportionate revenue on some villages and categorization of other villages as Sakimul Hal. The villages under Sakimul Hal category were exempt from revenue in view of the loss inflicted on them due to the famine. Under the name Griftani, the Tassildar every year would decide the amount of the pending dues or areas to be paid by the cultivators. Therefore, the new settlement team was to resolve the following issues to distribute the village land among the individual Assamese, to fix the revenue to be paid by the cultivators, to determine the rights of the landholders such as heredity and selling rights, to determine the nature of tax payment such as whether the revenue would be paid in cash or kind. Initially, the settlement team faced opposition from the villagers and the revenue officials from Lambada to Tasilda. Many a times the revenue officials interrupted the assessment process in the village as Lawrence stated that the villagers cannot believe that anything will be done to ameliorate their serfdom and the officials know that anything done for the villagers must necessarily affect their prerequisites. Lawrence started his assessment. He had some resources at his disposal, like the rules and methods laid down by earlier settlement team led by Mr. Wingate. The settlement of Kashmir Valley was commenced by Mr. Wingate ICS in 1887. When Lawrence was appointed, Wingate had already completed two tassels in the Gandhaval. Lawrence could also use the data prepared by the 1880 assessment team, which introduced the notion of Asami War Kivet. The first stage was to encourage all to return their own villages. People had fled from their villages after the severe famine of 1877 and had never returned back. When people began to see the benefits of the settlement in the neighboring villages, they gradually began to return and by 1891, even the most reluctant were reinstated in their original villages. The work of settling the Assamis of Kashmir was somewhat like placing men upon a chessboard. Not only were the figures to the Punjab to be replaced in their villages, but men who had left their ancestral land for other villages in which the assessment was light and the headman was influential had to be brought back. The second stage of the settlement was to visit and survey each village to make a realistic assessment of the revenue which could be expected from it. This was exciting for Lawrence as he got the opportunity to visit every corner of the valley. Lawrence had a small team to help him in his work, one British and two Indian assistants. In the evening, he sat around campfires listening to folklore, proverbs and songs of the old Kashmiris. Lawrence found it more difficult to talk to the elite class. Their traditional authority and status was undermined by Lawrence's dealings directly with the villagers. The assessment included a due consideration to factors such as altitude and topography, tree number and description, area of holding and type of soil, and sources of irrigation. After the revenue demand for a village had been assessed, it was broken down between the Assamis. Assami had been defined as the people recognized by the state as the lawful occupants of the land and recognized by the Kashmiris as rightful owners. In case of a dispute, evidence was to be recorded on the spot and case was to be decided by the settlement officer. In the case of Hindus and Sikhs, no final entry was to be made until the orders of the settlement officer were obtained. Besides the ordinary Assamis, there were many privileged holders of the land, variously known as Chakdars or Makarraridar, people who had acquired 
landed property and the deeds granted by the state. Most of these grants are formed of parcels of land taken from several villages and the privileged classes made a strong effort to have their grant separated off as a distinct estate. This was avoided and the Chakdar or Mukararidar was treated as an ordinary Assami of the several villages in which their estates lie and the land was to be assessed at the ordinary rates of agricultural land. Lawrence was not in the favor of conferring the right to sell and mortgage land on the Muslims of Kashmir. According to him, they were ignorant and very short-sighted. They are poor and would most certainly squander the wealth which would at once be handed over to them. Having agreed on the assessment figure, the next decision was whether to accept payment in kind. Originally, Lawrence wanted a solely cash settlement. The first group of objectors to this suggestion was the local officials. More seriously, in Lawrence's view, the numerous poor people of Srinagar objected since they depended on the influx of government grain and rice to the city. Eventually, he agreed to accept some rice and maize, but no pulses, cotton or oil seed, and he worked out a scheme to phase out gradually this payment in kind. Lawrence had not been in the favor of collection of grain because of the difficulties of its carriage, storage and sale. It became clear, however, that payment in kind was necessary to save lives and to retain the credibility of the settlement. Having finally determined the revenue of a village for 10 years and obtained the sanction of the state, Lawrence announced the new revenue scheme. At first, the revenue officials, the Lambadas and the Patwaris urged people to refuse the new revenue and a few villages declined to accept the new assessment. But within six months from the time of the new assessment, villagers came in and begged for admission to the benefits of the new settlement. Traditional authority of Patwaris and Lambardas had been declined. Lambardas were made responsible for the collection of villages' total revenue payment and in return would be paid a salary of 5% of this sum. The Patwari was no longer recognized by the villagers who had appointed him to it. Instead of one or two year local appointments, a smaller number of permanent officials were to be appointed by the government. The new settlement was a major breakthrough in the rebuilding of the Kashmir's economy. Begar was abolished, means of connectivity were improved, villages were repopulated, and the area under cultivation also increased significantly. Efforts were made to improve irrigation, commercialize fruit production, and introduce new crops such as sari culture. Analyzing the Lawrence's approach, it could be inferred that he was overwhelmed by the miseries of the Kashmiri people, but on the other hand, he wanted to be loyal to the British establishment and to the Maharaja. Considering all the facts, it's evident that personal charisma and motivation laid a significant influence on his administrative career. The ethnographic love to engage with people and appreciate their narrative in whatever form is something that was of great help to his cause. As Lawrence said, as for my six years in Kashmir, I would live those years 50 times over.